So, uh, hi again. Uh, my name is Regina Massey, and I am a DNI enthusiast and a storyteller at Inclusify. Just as my title suggests, I have a very, very interesting job. So, uh, what does my job entail? Uh, it entails talking to amazing, beautiful people who are trying to do whatever they can to enable inclusions in their own capacity. Uh, for example, we started off uh, by understanding uh, unconscious bias. A couple of months ago, we went on to celebrate the Pride Month in which we had many speakers talk about their own experiences, their own challenges. Uh, we went on to understand uh, gender pay parity and uh, we had beautiful women leaders. We had important psychologists, psychiatrists talk about uh, important issues such as cultural inclusion. So today's session is aimed at putting all of the knowledge which we have gathered from the last few months into tangible points. For example, these tangible points can be used by each and every one of you who's tuned in today to build their own DNI strategy. So I would encourage you to ask us as many questions as possible so that uh, we can actually make an impact, not only in the workplace, but beyond that. So I would like to remind you that Inclusify's motto is uh, enabling inclusion in the workplace. And it gives me immense pleasure to introduce you to somebody who is not only doing this very thing, but she believes in diversity and inclusion, she lives it through her life. So uh, she's the current director of diversity and inclusion at Publicist Sapient. Vishaka, welcome to the first session of Equity Matters. Hello. So uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity to get in this conversation with you. And I'm sure that uh, everybody tuning in is really excited uh, to learn more about uh, you know new ways they can come up with or innovations they can come up with to make everybody's life better. So uh, over this session, we're gonna go over what allyship is, maybe touch a little upon uh, your life, understand where you come from. And uh, this is the first session of the month. After this, we're gonna have a session each uh, week and we're gonna have a specific DNI leader who's gonna come and help us understand more nitty gritties of uh, the entire DNI space. So, Vishaka, I would like to start off by asking you why is DNI so important for you? Ah, okay. Why is DNI important for me? One, because I think it's an it's a very very enriching subject to be on. Yeah. So, I uh, my mind needs like different. Uh, different things to be stimulated and I think this is one subject of all the different professional work that I've done be it in the space of environment management, uh, different HR, be it business partnering or uh, COE space. I think this has been one of my most interesting uh, portfolios. Uh, so that is part one. Uh, part two is I, I personally believe that every, you know, respect for me is a very, very uh, core value. Like, yeah. you know, I feel um, everything else is meaningful if we have the basic hygiene of respect. To me, um, only after many years of my professional uh, career did I actually see biases at work. Uh, so I was brought up to be, uh, you, know, you know, I didn't even know what inequality meant in my family, frankly. Um, Till I grew up and I saw some friends, uh, you know, in their household, some bit of the difference that you see. Um, and then I, I didn't feel it at the workplace at all till many years uh, later when I was leading talent acquisition. And I saw some very senior folks uh, who were perfectly decent uh, colleagues, senior folks and very good friends of mine who started avoiding women at a certain life stage um, in critical roles, uh, fearing that they will get married or they'll have children. I, I found that crazy. I found that insane. And uh, I just didn't, uh, I couldn't, uh, you know, frankly, I, I didn't fathom that. And I felt this just doesn't seem right. And then when I read more about it and I started understanding and we were, in, uh, you know, looking at engagement, I realized that this is a problem. I mean, it's not just, just one off, two off experiences that I was having. And uh, that is why it is very important for me because it, it disturbs me. <laughs> when people are not respectful and, and I feel it's like such a basic thing. 
and if we are uh, you know today selling a commodity is easier than finding the right talent at the right price point at the right time right revenue generation is actually easier than finding the right person for the job and organizations spend uh, so much trying to get the right person and also engage them so i feel it is absolutely foolish not to create the environment to retain them right um, and it you know that's why it seems like the only basic common sense thing to do but it you know now that it's not so um, you know perfectly easy to do it is very strategic so long answer to your short question <laughs> no i understand your answer one because i think many women have uh, faced a similar issue at different capacities right uh, where we our voice we felt was not heard right i'm so happy that there are uh, now programs and strategies which organizations are putting forward to ensure that this kind of biasness is not brought to the forefront and uh, i i really i was taken aback uh, by the first conversation you and i had in which you talked about how important dni is and it's not just work it's it's life so th- that is why i think you've been able to come up with strategies and come up with solutions to problems in a very tangible way and i congratulate you for that so uh, jumping right into the subject if you can give us a little bit uh, of an understanding about allyship and then help us understand what's the difference between advocacy and allyship and what can we do can employees do both yes so i was thinking that it's not as if it's a there's a very big difference like you know it's not like you do definitions make difference however um allyship is uh, being a you know ally is what ally is a friend a supporter so you do what a friend and a supporter does right you you stand by and before you stand by you have to understand a friend right so you actually invest time in understanding a certain community and we call you know one of one very nice term for this is underrepresented community because that's one question that comes to a lot of people is gender is gender the only diversity then why are we only talking about women uh etc yeah. etc et right so it is best that uh, you know we say underrepresented community so first understand and it's not going to be intuitive uh it's not easy to say that oh i understand the women agenda think and maybe read a little more about it right uh because otherwise you would have formed your opinion based on some some of your own experience of course and which is not to be diminished but it's not the larger perspective maybe uh actually read read about the lgbtq uh you know agenda uh, but again if we have not grown up meeting an lgbtq person and you know knowing an lgbtq person or a person with disability we don't see them so much in our schools our colleges uh, not so much in our homes like you know there are people who would have uh, lived with and have people with disabilities as they grow but not it's not like a majority which is why you need to invest in actually understanding what their life is is about and i think then uh you know i'm hoping that you'll find your heart's calling to say that i'll support this cause i'll do something to make their lives easier i will help them out when they are in a organization or at you know outside the organization at our homes that is allyship uh however as you take a strong allyship ahead i think that's when you bec- you can become an advocate where you start talking about it uh so you you learn you understand you form a different perspective a higher perspective i'm hoping a more supportive perspective you actually think about what is the problem for them not being accepted so much at work i think that's when you will get some of your own answers so then you t- start talking about it you tell your family what you've learned you tell your manager your colleagues uh, and at some point of time you will see that these biases actually play out because there's somebody who will push back on on something that you're trying to tell them or they will you know you will see somebody uh, being ill treated um or being at the wrong end of bias like you know maybe in a hiring discussion a promotion discussion a retention discussion um uh, a basic support discussion right um just you know just think about it you know calling you know we all go, used to go for lunch together right um we have friend circles we hang out with if you feel there are people who are not called for lunch by others that is as simple as it is right uh, and then you stand up for it and then you talk for them then you go out and talk to even more people that changes lives right that is an advocate 
So yes, you can be an ally and an advocate, but there are things that you need to do. And again, just because let's say Bishakha said today, and you know there are other professionals and Regina, you you will talk about it. It won't suddenly happen. It comes with practice. Uh, it can be lonely being an advocate. Uh, so you have to prep for it, and then you persist, and that's what advocacy means. Right. So I think we've been able to understand what allyship is and advocacy is at their own level. And if I'm not wrong, both are uh, important. Right. So coming from an organization's perspective, uh, let's talk about an organization which wants to promote allyship uh, in the workplace. What is your advice about uh, the initiative, how to start, how to implement it, and the kind of roadblocks which would uh, come and how to, you know, steer clear of them. Yeah, so not always can you steer clear of everything, right? My first uh, suggestion is n- don't think of copy-pasting things. Uh, there is enough and more uh, information and material available on, um, you know, how you further and you take a DNI practice ahead. Uh, but uh, I've been working on DNI for the past 13 plus years, right? Uh, but I never think that, okay, I know what to do in a new setup or an organization, like um, having been in my current organization for quite some time, I had a meeting with somebody from Japan and Singapore. And my first suggestion again was, okay, let me share what India has, but can you go back and talk to the people and ask them? Uh, So I don't think, you know, copy pasting is the first pitfall because we've seen it work somewhere else. Maybe you've seen it in 10 different companies and then you think it, okay, it works. Um, may not. So I would say ask. Uh, When you ask, you find out where the organization or the current set of people that you will work with stand. Like, you know, uh, it's not a leveling or a benchmark, but you kind of find out where they are on that journey. I would never say it's a solution. It's always going to be an adaptation, experimentation, working together. And when you work together, a person will not be able to charter the entire journey, I think. Uh, I think start from there you know, wherever uh, you find most of the people is, right? And and it is okay if they are far ahead and it is absolutely okay if they are far behind. It's absolutely fine. Uh, the second part is, of course, read a lot and talk to a lot of people and, and talk to people who've actually in- implemented it. You know, I find that there are so many, um, there's so much of resource material available today. Go ahead and do these, these, these things. Uh, I would suggest that you speak to some people who've gone and actually done them. You know why? Because there is a journey in execution. It's not easy. You will probably get stuck at places you didn't even think. For example, um, I was in a, a certain organization and uh, it, was, uh, it was a progressive organization. They would win awards. Um, and in the gender agenda, I had suggested that surrogacy be a part of, you know, you know, the whole uh, benefits program. Um, Let's start by allocating some resources and time to learn about the LGBTQ community. And for three months in the HR leadership of that organization, we just kept discussing this. Uh, At some point of time, I was thinking, am I not uh, saying something right? (laughs) You know, like, why why is this question? Because they were not ready. It's, you know, you assume that people, because you know, they've done whatever basic and more, uh, yeah. but they were not ready. So go from there. So I think these are the basic pitfalls, right? Uh, the next thing is don't rush into it. Um, you know, uh, don't be in a hurry to brand. I think that is a very big challenge organizations face. You know why? Because it's very exhilarating to be recognized for something you've done. And maybe organization will say, wow, you know, the external environment. But if you've not really, your, your program has not reached the depth. Uh, remember, I, I'll, I'll repeat something I really, really believe in. Culture is not created only by the leaders and the DNI professional, you know, an inclusion culture. Culture is an experience uh, that the person who's sitting next to you gives you. If just the person who's sitting next to you may or may not be your friend, etc., cetera, um, is treating you well, right? It makes a difference. But, and, you know, maybe you have your MD and BNI lead and HR lead are excellent people. And they're saying all the right things. They're probably even taking the right action. But the person next to you is not behaving well with you, is not treating you with respect. That will be your experience of that organization. So depth is important. Please make that voice really loud. And then go ahead and brand. Because again, 
com- external communication and branding is very important also because it creates the external look ecosystem you demonstrating uh, inclusion and diversity is a big part of you contributing to that ecosystem of the country uh, but don't rush it so i think these are some quick things that i i would say and you know of course pick you know whatever you hear pick those agenda don't just think that okay if there are six seven things in dni i have to do that now right see the readiness of the organization so uh, thank you for that answer and if i am not wrong you pointed to the fact that everything should start with research and uh, to understand uh, where your organization is at and then obviously you can build your own plan and try to innovate as you go and then go to the next step so uh, a very thoughtful answer thank you for uh, sharing uh, the next thing which i'm very curious and i would like to know what are the dni initiatives which uh, sapient has taken sapient india has taken okay so uh, quickly um when i joined and this has been uh, you know maybe around a one and a half years or so uh, i did the same thing so i took the first three months to listen and i was thinking okay looks like a lot of uh, tick boxes were also checked right uh, and then i went to the depth of it like i said um, and i realized that uh, we could do more uh, and more in terms of sustenance and more in terms of also involving a lot of, lot of people so when you know what happens in a lot of work is you have people who are a part of initiatives and suppose they move in and out in the organization or or projects or outside the organization then the agenda falls now that's not something you can you know always avoid but you know that's what a plan is about right that's how you do a succession plan that you know let let there be more people taking the load so um we started with a uh, sensitization of the agenda um and strategy and we identified key influencers in the organization right and i'm not saying sensitization etc has not happened before as the agenda develops your sensitization will also develop you have to take everybody with you so you know you get everybody in and then you keep talking about it right uh, so we st- we identified three key stakeholder groups uh, the hr teams we call them people success uh, the leadership the india leadership um again a lot of repetition but important and then people managers right and then i think the larger population because uh, if your hr team is not completely aligned people have extraordinary expectations from hr in an organization and not every hr professional is meant to be a dni professional right uh, you know they think if we since we are talking about empathy hr every hr professional like you know they've been spoon fed empathy in an mba college it doesn't work like that right yeah. so you know you need uh, any dni journey any dni lead professional needs the hr teams to definitely be on your side and speak that language and uh, so we did that and it was a huge success um, and from there we worked with the leadership quite a bit again uh, to basically keep ensuring that they get all the feeders for them to pick what works for them and of course the seriousness of the agenda in terms of me- you know measures that we want to achieve right so they are all with us so there is this whole I and mean, you know make it interesting so we we do a lot of really innovative uh, work in terms of sensitizations and communications uh, we also have a very uh, formal practices include you know ind practices on um, attracting retention and uh, growth of diversity talent pools right uh, we want to really like hold very close to our chest the talent pool we have in the organization we want to ensure that people see us as a you know uh, inclusive organization outside and hence we are able to hire diverse talent um, and we are also very serious in sponsoring growth right um so that those are like formal functional tracks of work apart from that then is the initiatives which is all about what we call inclusive mindsets uh in that we have uh, viva women which is our uh, women in adv- career advancement and growth track it's also about personal uh, growth it's about how do we you know we have this whole concept of happiness happiness one winning uh how right so we want to ensure that women uh, you know as a cohort they feel happy in our organization uh, the second cohort is on mental health 
the the work is really about ensuring it's not a taboo topic at all we have excellent uh, framework of supporting um, our people for mental health uh, we they get access to not only free resources for themselves but also for their families uh, and i know that if somebody comes up and says uh, free sessions they've exhausted they want more we've gone ahead and obliged with that right um then uh, people with disabilities we have hired people with disabilities we've grown people with disabilities uh we are looking at really now ensuring that everybody is very mindful like you know how what do you need to think about when you send emails when you create a basic ppt uh we think we are just going to send it to these two three people or maybe five ten people right you never think that this could land up with somebody two years down the line who may be a blind person right you don't think this could land up with somebody who is a uh, hearing impairment person you we don't think aisa thodi hoga we think it's not i mean it's not something that crosses your mind but it could happen as easily as anything else so we we are working on that you know making everything accessible we are also uh, you know uh, ensuring that we are at par with the best uh, so that if there is a person with disability we hire next they find this place inclusive right uh, then the whole pride chapter when i'm say the whole pride chapter because it's a lot of work right um i i know that i uh, i volunteered to be in an you know in a group called working with pride which i now lead um it taught me so much uh, and this was when i had definitely completed at least 9 10 years in as a diversity uh, professional and i i thought i i didn't know anything about the community right and i found so much of love and affection that it angered me to do everything that i can in my capacity to make the workplaces inclusive not just my own workplace but more right uh, so pride is about letting people know these stories so because i have learned first hand that you cannot read about the lgbtq community and understand what you have to do it doesn't work like that uh fortunately or unfortunately it's important you invest time to understand and i think we owe it to them right um so the pride work is really about creating a lot of visibility in our organization um we do some very um uh, so i'll say this that uh, there is a lot of discomfort in interacting with the community like the moment you know yeah right uh and there there might be optical discomfort when you see a trans person so you're looking at a person of a certain gender but they are saying they're not and now you have to adjust your eyes will uh make you say that you know if you're looking at a trans woman and the person looks like a man you will say he right. and you keep correcting and that's fine but it, there is a lot of discomfort so we have a lot of experiential program so we actually partnered with solidarity with mist uh with uh, um with sangama in bangalore and we we have had our leaders interact with the trans community directly so one of our flagship program the top leadership program is called transform and they spend one full day only with the trans people so that uh, you know for a whole day so you learn their stories uh, we had planned a coaching discussion which leaders do every day and then we plan so that 101 like there were two people who were partnering on a project so you you're working with them as if they are your colleagues right uh that inspired a lot of people to do more right uh we of course uh, sponsored some excellent external events you don't have to do everything inside right like um i i have to tell you this that we are uh, partnering with mist uh and uh, on this out and loud uh, queer film festival yeah. it's yeah. a 50 plus movies yeah um that we you know we are bringing on a virtual pat- platform and movies are such a beautiful yeah. uh way to learn right and it's entertaining like why would you not watch it so these uh, you know we are bringing to our global employee audience for free for a full month and we are also opening it up to the public and we've done movie shows before and we got huge amount of feed, you know great feedback and we've come back we keep bringing so this month because of 6 september is dedicated to pride so we have like every month we dedicate to a topic and just to move on from pride we also have generational diversity mm-hmm. um and last but not the least i don't know why i'm saying this last because it comes much ahead in terms of community this thing is caregivers 
so people who are parents parents with uh, you know of children with special needs or lgbtqi children etc uh, elderly care uh, you could be a single parent you could be a parent of a pet right um, and uh, you know regina more than anybody else that you don't feel different towards a pet than uh, than your own child right and there are support that you need from the organization in this so we have some of the best uh, policies and framework as well uh and that's i think that's number one before you do anything else so in terms of flexibility support um you know our uh, insurance and benefit is uh, one of the best in the country we uh, provide insurance for your live in partners gender agnostic uh, parents in laws apart from your parents and apart from your immediate family and like a huge amount of benefits including alternative therapies etc we also cover hiv positive individuals and uh, if you read a little more you will know that they also need predict uh, precautionary medicine called prep right so that all of that is covered in our benefits and we are pretty proud about that so uh, i think sapient is doing a lot and uh, it makes me really excited it, uh, to know that uh, you're leading the charge over here and you are having a conversation with wonderful people an interesting thing which you pointed out was mist uh, so mist is led by sham kunur and uh, we also have associated with him and the interesting part is that we have covered his story so his story again is a very beautiful one and uh, i would urge every single participant to go to our website and uh, type out his name and you can view his video and the article we have written so he was one of the main speakers we had for our pride month so that is something beautiful which you are definitely doing Uh, another thing which i understood from you is that you do a lot of unbiased hiring right so uh, if i can go a little deeper and try to understand how do you manage uh, unbiased hiring okay so uh, i think uh, all of us uh, in india at least and maybe over the world have to admit that we've not reached where we want to be so yes we do unbiased hiring uh with all humility i will say that we keep improvising the process right so uh we have a very uh, we have actually a certification for every interviewer uh and we also have something called a ai interview this is all about uh, ensuring that we are bringing in the right person and hence our interviewers know exactly what to say what not to say in fact uh, i'm i'm designing Uh, the second level of uh, uh, trainings also for interviewers right we are in a hiring mode uh, we need our interviewers to be absolutely sure of where we are uh, we've added, added things like generational diversity and more in this year's agenda which we hadn't done so much last year uh, so we want them to be very sure of what to ask what not to ask and you will hear such horrible experiences of hiring that we definitely don't want those stories here um <laughs> secondly uh, think about it um, we are, you know we we sometimes have these uh, remember interviews are generally done over weekends because people are more free over weekends yeah. but also think about it how many women you know already with the crunch of time that we have how many women or people with caregiving responsibilities will be able to again take time over a weekend right uh, so it's not it's not an easy thing to solve we can only support as much but we are mindful that we actually have a diverse panel of interviewers um very recently uh, and i'm very proud of that project that one of our colleagues did on her own uh, she you know with some nudge from me uh, in terms of an idea so we've done a phase of uh, ensuring all our jds are inclusive uh you'll be surprised how easy this can be in the sense that there are tools available you don't really have to read everything but if you decide, if you make up your mind for it that it's not a very difficult project to do and we do the you know we're doing this globally to ensure that uh, you know all our uh, job descriptions are something that people feel they want to apply you will be surprised how many women actually don't apply for jobs uh just because they see some you know something in that cv that is oh i'm not there sometimes they can't even explain to you uh, i've seen this happen to uh, people on the in the ageism bracket as well right men and women they look at the whole thing and they say um, i don't think they'll take me 
basically uh, and unfortunate uh, but very real common experience right um, apart from that we also have candidate feedback uh, etc so this is more for our hiring process of course uh, remember when we measure our diversity uh, efforts hiring is a very big part of it so we also actually have a diversity hiring team so uh, uh, another interesting thing which i would like to point here is uh, inclusify is also working hard uh, to enable inclusions so uh, i think it would interest you to know that we also have an ai tool which supports uh, inclusive practices uh, so i'm not going to take a lot of time discussing about this but if there is anybody who would like to know more you can reach out to us uh, through our email id which is hello at inclusify.io Uh, but coming back to the topic uh, you talked about a couple of groups which you are a part of uh, one of them you mentioned was working with pride i understand you're also part of many more groups uh, some of which you are leading and some of which have made a real impact not just in your life but in everybody's life who's part of that group uh, so one can you help us understand what importance these groups hold and how they are helping the society yeah i am actually uh, very proud of a lot of people <laughs> so i i i speak very fondly of my colleagues who have actually uh, you know led so many projects like i mentioned with, with me but i'm also very proud of some of uh, the people i work with in some of these uh, different i would say community support groups um so the first one that i became a part of uh, is called super mums of india it's a group of mothers uh it started as a bangalore small group in bangalore where people just wanted to have like a facebook group to talk about uh it is currently a 40 maybe more like you know we have four five groups uh you know some support groups in the cities because sometimes you just need quick support within the city and a main group uh, so 40 plus people there and uh, what it did is i was studying i studied mental health and counseling and therapy for about 5 years like you know on the side and um, we would have a lot of these anonymous complain uh, you know uh, posts about complaining about distress in their life and i started answering some of those questions uh, very typically more like the agni aunt columns we used to have but obviously we were not agni aunts we don't want to be called that but so we started sharing experience and that was my first support because um and then i also offered uh, to speak to some people who wanted to be anonymous um on in some way in terms of mental health to sub, you know to help them out or provide suggestions and that started working and then these people became my friends also because you know we would keep in touch etc um from there the other uh, you know support group i'm really proud of is a single parents group uh, called singularly plural and now we have single parent friends and uh, it has uh, men and women and it uh, provided a safe space for people to talk uh, about things that they don't share outside it could be um, like you know your spouse may have passed away and it's been some years and how many times can you call up people and cry right uh, now you're having uh, problems with children and different children age groups come with a different set of things right uh, and you can't really share because you feel judged that they will feel oh you're ill equipped or you have sympathy because you're a you know you're a single parent then there is this whole ke- you know plethora of people you'll be surprised how many people my friends actually tell me you you probably attract them to you <laughs> because i meet a lot of people when i share that i'm a single parent i, I meet a lot of people who um talk about their sim- single parenthood and um this group has provided people with friends right um a company um a supportive year a supportive uh, you know you, we support with uh, suggestions and network and resources on legal aspects for people who are going through their divorce or you know you are also worried about how do you take care of your children if something happens to you etc uh, financial challenges in you know how do you get a financial planner and stuff uh, right a very quick health support i think when any single parent falls ill it's like they make it worse by thinking the worst in their heads uh and this group just comes together and says it's okay it's okay you know we we'll, we'll all be there for you so i have seen it change the a supporting group change people's lives because they start feeling so much brighter about life right uh dating 
if if you were to talk about uh, you know sexuality or dating uh, you can't really go and talk you know if you're a 40 plus person or a 35 plus person or if you're a man who has this image that you've held it together for years you can't really go and open up suddenly um and apart from that of course my favorite is uh, working with pride which is a um uh, it's a community which started with lgbtq advocacy and now i think we talk about a lot more of the dni topics i think i've met some fabulous individuals in the dni prof- you know professional field uh many 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 friends from the lgbtqi community and um this is also a very empowering community it has helped uh, people in distress in jobs uh, we've always we've learned from each other by the way all of it that i'm talking to you a lot of it would have come from groups like this where people have shared something and then you know we've all just built on it so i am a huge fan of community support and i think it happens so virtually and beautifully on whatsapp groups and facebook groups and all of that so and, and these are all all india groups so that is one space where technology is really helping us out i Absolutely. think it's bringing us closer uh, also here is your chance uh, to ask as many questions as possible i do see a question which has been posted but uh, we'll take that towards the end of the session uh, in the meantime if you can ask me more questions that would be uh, wonderful so uh, vishaka there's a very very big question which i'm going to ask you right now and i understand that uh, we don't have a lot of time to go into the complete detail of it but we want to just understand what it means and how to go about it let's talk about diversity policy if you can help us understand what it is and uh, where to start off with um i don't think there's a policy called diversity policy but you're talking about the bouquet of it right i think first and foremost uh, so you will find resources on that too at the same time start by checking if you have explicitly on your organization's website and all public platform wherever your organization's uh, basic policy or vision mission is if you have mentioned that you are an equal opportunity employer and also mention what it means by inclusion like you know which are the diversity groups that you are talking about sometimes it's just you will say others also but mention everything um age background cultural background race ethnic city you know gender sexual ba- sexuality background um religious background right uh, co- you know communities right so all of it needs to be very very explicitly mentioned uh apart from that i think look at the employee employee life cycle right and start with uh, when they are joining you if all the formats that you get them to fill every touch point whatever they are reading on your site whatever forms you're sending is that gender agnostic or not right uh, one of the most important thing that's never going out of fashion is uh, harassment uh you know i like how you put that <laughs> yeah i i you know i don't know what else to do but to use humor sometimes for things like this because it's so painful and you 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 just wonder why right but it you know apart from some cases where it's misunderstood etc all of it needs to be very very uh, i'll tell you what like before you do anything more fancy uh in terms of dni please ensure your posh uh and Uh, sexual harassment and workplace harassment policies are extremely well implemented right uh, do not means any words and any action in ensuring that you send out the message that we are extremely serious about it i work for the best organizations where i have seen people say it's okay i will talk to them in private mm-hmm. right of a complaint that's come to you i think you should never do that even if uh, you feel it's tricky the person is important etc i learned from organizations where um witnesses or uh, others were able to report harassment and they took action even when the victim said okay i think you could let them go you should you know i i learned from there like that's where my values come from if they can do it why not everybody and it definitely deters the person right um so please ensure that part is absolutely clear uh, and you do all the right things there even if it's difficult and sometimes extreme do it it sends the right message um then you can come to actually auditing all your policies and benefits right is your maternity policy gender agnostic 
uh, is your you know parental policy then it will be uh, is your insurance gender agnostic does it actually cover you know i covered some of it so i'm not going to spell out all of them just in the interest of time but is your insurance for everybody right has it if there is a, a person who has a same sex partner how difficult is it for them to avail a same sex partner benefit is very important for that experience and the benefits person can only get that benefit for you but your hr folks and managers have to ensure that they are with the person when it's getting availed right so don't lose any opportunity in that and ensure your benefits policies workplace uh, flexibility policies a reasonable accommodation policy if you have for people with disability all of it is gender agnostic um apart from that uh, um i think again in terms of like i said the forms etc so this is more or less what we uh, what we say in terms of policies so uh, we have a lot of questions which are pouring in right now uh one of them is quite interesting i think you have definitely encouraged a lot of people today and uh, we have an individual who's asking us about uh the first steps he or she can take to build their own career as a dni professional yeah i think um i think the first easy thing is to volunteer uh and volunteer and learn right uh, you may be a part of a underrepresented group or you may not be i think it doesn't matter but if you volunteer then you would have heard the stories you would have known how some of this work happen you know sometimes i coach uh, people that i am also grooming let's say to be dni professionals to say that I'll, so much of it is just follow up why because i can go ahead and do something but i have to influence others to do something so that they experience and that experience stays with them so you have to you know it's good to shadow uh there are certifications available thankfully there are quite a few now there is interview that does a cdp certification uh fiki has come up with a new course starting this this month uh there are more certifications for a dni profession so you'll at least get the spectrum the theory of it right but uh, even after the theory i think you should uh, shadow and volunteer in an erg or contribute time to the dni agenda and i think uh, every one of us is always thankful for legs and hands uh so that would be my uh take and then uh, you know take on bits and pieces of the dni this thing you know uh, like program manage a part of it and i think that's that's the seasoning that you really need um of course you should i think invest in uh, attending workshops and conferences there are quite a few online which tell you so that you you know you make notes just like any other this thing but i think it's a lot of learning that goes into it right and this is um, what do i say it's a it's a lot of people management right another thing that will uh, hasten that journey is to uh, volunteer to be trainers uh, for dni courses meaning you can take a induction session on dni uh, it, you know it will be a standard material but the more you say it and the more you interact you will understand how people behave um you could uh, volunteer to be you know on the train the trainers for gender sensitization and others i think that would really help right i think you've given a very valuable insight and given two three avenues which the person can take or two three routes which the person can take uh, there is another individual who would like your suggestion about books which uh, he can read about understanding inclusion so more resources he wants to know oh i am not the right person to tell you books i read uh, i read different things to on a, on a topic that i feel will fill me in but uh, you know you you have sojourners uh, son the son sorry not sojourner sondarya dr sondarya rajesh's book called 99 days diversity challenge i think it's called um you would have uh, you can pick up sheryl sandberg's book called lean in on the gender agenda for sure um i i haven't really picked something only for and and of course option b which are two great books to have but i will say uh, you know pick up enable india's book which talks about uh, different roles and people with disabilities who can fit into those roles i think that would be such an eye opener for you to know how many tech roles etc people with disabilities can do right then um and then i think uh, yeah i i really read a lot more books for myself 
uh but i i hear more i hear more talks i meet a lot more people than i read books on diversity so uh, i would like to point out that uh, inclusify covers a lot of articles and blogs and everything so uh we have a couple of articles written around inclusion and we have an expert column in which we have different dni leaders who specifically talk about inclusion so uh maybe any participant can go and uh, fill up on that knowledge so moving on uh, asking you the next question uh, there is a person who is in a bit of a pickle so he wants to say that whenever he does a dni he feels it's only about gender biases uh, what else can we have so i i know you've covered a little bit but if you can help him jump out of this situation um okay so again so know that the gender topic is again not going out of fashion very soon why because the movement is slow yes women have uh, have uh, had certain advantages position in the last let's say 20 plus years with the gender agenda coming to the forefront but there's a huge way to go so if you look at average uh, you know just tech average of gender uh ratio it's about 25ish it will be lesser if you if the organization is pure tech it will be a slightly more if the organization is in it services uh and then there is the whole manufacturing and the other industry where it goes up and down depending on how the organization has been in, uh inclusive or traditionally if that role has been seen as a as something women can do or not right um at the same time don't shy away from talking about it yeah. because it's important so believe in it that's fine to you know say that uh, it's about gender bias and it let it remain there for some time but uh, the other topics i mentioned is mental health gender agnostic happens to almost everybody right we say uh, one in one in four individuals in india suffers from mental health challenge uh, just so just do the maths right uh caregivers we call them caregivers because anybody who's a caregiver for an elderly person um a child a spouse anybody who's sick a dear person right needs that so that is a part of your inclusion journey right are you going to tell somebody whose wife is sick right uh to not drop a project deadline think about it, it project deadlines are very important of course but a sick wife is also important and i i'm i'm choosing this example very carefully because you think a sick wife will take care of themselves right but if a, if it's a sick husband it's very okay for a wife to come back to office and say that you know he's very sick i you know he re, he really needs it right uh, so so think about that so that's a caregiving part and then the lgbtq people with disability i think we've talked enough for many years now <laughs> and organizations need to do something more uh please don't be surprised uh if you hear of a bias happening to a person with people with disability who is a person with disability or an lgbtq person in an organization that is very well known for dni because like i said it could just be the next person not behaving right with them right that one interview question might even make them go back right so right say the right things um and then now ageism is as um, concerning as the whole millennial generational uh, inclusion so read a little more about it uh, things that we don't talk enough in india yet and now i don't think we can ignore it religious diversity right go back and check if all the holidays calendar the holiday calendar that you have actually includes how many parsi new year and other uh, zoroastrian northeastern festivals to be actually have how many people from the northeast you have in your workplace yeah. uh, that's the race ethnicity discussion right um have you done have you ensured that people are aware that you can be supportive in some way for uh, women or men going through domestic violence um uh, the discussion on uh, casteism right the cisco news happened in silicon valley for indians and it's not just shameful it's also a wake up call right so so all of this is diversity 
right i think that's beautifully put and uh, we have one last question uh, for the evening which is uh, somebody here is really excited to be an ally uh, so he or she would like to know about the groups which they could join or are there any starting steps you can suggest yeah so uh, i wish i could ask this person but uh, you know clearly that did you mean by uh, joining groups within your organization because i think that's a good start um but if you want to join a certain group so the super mom you know i'm thinking maybe they are also talking about the groups i yeah. mentioned yeah so, so the super moms of india is a facebook group anybody who's a mother uh, you know can can join with request and we we approve it we have like five fabulous people who run the group now all of them have a story of survival and hardship and now uh, beautifully supporting other other people right so i was hearing somewhere Uh, and this is probably my answer to also your ally question uh experience is not what happens to a person experience is what a person does with what happens to them right uh, so what kind of a ally you can be actually might materialize from your own experience right uh, apart from on the group spirit super moms of india working with pride please uh, message me sometime if you want to be a part of an lgbtq advocacy group uh it is for people who want to take this back to their workplace and do something more about it right talk be an advocate uh, or if you are a dni professional or you work in any of these fields that i mentioned um the single parents group again you can message me uh, on linkedin or facebook and uh, it is a parent, you know it's a group only for single parents uh, so that will work uh, i also have other women group like for example there's a group called status single which is only for single women um so if you ping me maybe i can revert the right group to you and help you join them also i think uh, if anybody is interested in reaching out to vishaka you can write to us and we'll be happy to connect you uh, with her uh, with that i would like to end this session and i would like to thank first of all vishaka for this uh, beautiful session today and helping us understand a uh, key points which we can actually substantial points which we can build upon and create our own strategies uh, also another important thing is that it ended up being an inspiration for all of us i think it uh, got us excited to build something for ourselves so uh, that is really important if we can encourage just two or three people to enable inclusion then our work is done uh, also this was the first session and an amazing one at it as uh, the first session for equity matters uh, next week we'll be back with another dni leader and we'll be talking about important uh, issues or challenges faced in the workplace so until then thank you all for joining and stay tuned and do follow us on all our social media handles to keep updated thank, thank you, you.